Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show. So in this video, we'll look at how do NAD plus levels change during the day? So to help address this question, I've split the video up into four sections. First, we'll go over the circadian clock basics. Then we'll look at some of the enzymes involved in NAD synthesis and its regulation throughout the day. And then finally, we'll talk about how NAD plus levels themselves actually fluctuate during the day. But before we go any further, what actually is NAD? Well, one quote that I really like from David Sinclair is that you could argue that NAD plus is the most important molecule in the body, perhaps with the exception of ATP, because you'll be dead in 30 seconds without it. So NAD, which stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, is a really important cofactor found in the body and is actually one of the most abundant molecules in our bodies. And so NAD has two main functions, one of which is to act as a redox cofactor. And so NAD is really important in metabolic processes and also it's a substrate for NAD plus dependent enzymes. So in a previous video where I talked more about NMN, one of the upstream components of NAD plus, we looked at NAD plus metabolism and the role of these different enzymes. And what we came to is we, we discussed how NAD plus levels actually change during the day. And this is the link between NAD plus and the circadian clock. But not only is the NAD plus levels an output of the clock, it also has a role in driving the clock as well. And last time I said that it was too complicated to go into full details. And so I'm going to go into more detail in this video. Um, even though nobody actually said they wanted the video, I decided to make it anyway. So let's talk about the circadian clock. So the circadian clock is a really important biological process that enables us to adapt different uh, processes in the body to the correct time of day. And so these include 24 hour cycles in behavior, physiology, metabolism, and selectivity. Discovery of the components involved in the circadian clock was of so much importance that it was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 2017. So how does the circadian clock regulate a 24 hour rhythm? So I went into more detail about this in a previous video, but to understand this video, I'll go over just the key concepts for you to understand. So in the mammalian core clock, there are four key protein components that are kind of like the essential parts to the circadian rhythm. And so this includes clock, BMR1, cryptochrome and period. And so in the clock, clock and BMR kind of they interact and they form diamonds together. And also cryptochrome and period, they also pair together. And so these proteins basically coordinate this 24 hour rhythm in a variety of different cell processes. And this is referred to as the transcription translation feedback loop. So how does this work then? So clock and BMR1 are both transcription factors. So what this means is they can bind DNA and regulate the expression of different genes. So clock and BMR1, as I already said, they, they pair together and they go into the nucleus of a cell and they bind to DNA. And they upregulate the expression of a variety of different genes. But two really important genes that they upregulate is cryptochrome and period. And so cryptochrome and period, as I said, they pair together. And what they do is they form a complex with clock and BMR1 and actually repress the activity of clock and BMR1. So by repressing clock and BMR1, they then prevent their own expression. And so this negative feedback loop regulates that 24 hour cycles in all of these different metabolic and physiological processes that go on in the cell. And so in addition to cryptochrome and periods, another gene that they upregulate is nicotinamide phosphoribosyl transferase or NAMPT, or NAMPT, I have literally no idea how you're supposed to say it. Let's go for NAMPT because it's easy to say. So what is NAMPT? Well, as I mentioned in a previous video talking about NMN, NAMPT is a protein that converts nicotinamide into NMN, and then NMN can then be converted into NAD+. So as a consequence of being regulated by clock and BMR1, the expression levels of NAMPT also fluctuate during a 24 hour cycle. And so this has consequences for understanding the levels of NAD plus throughout the day as well. So as I said, NAMPT adds a phosphoribosyl moiety to nicotinamide and that converts nicotinamide into NMN. And so NAMPT is actually the rate limiting enzyme in the salvage pathway 
of regenerating NAD+. So actually the levels of NAMD is really important for dictating the amount of NAD+, that's present in the body. So how do the protein levels of NAMD change throughout the day? Well, there's been a very good study um, published in Science that I'll link in the description that looked at how the, lev the levels of NAMD fluctuate in mouse liver throughout the day. So what they did was they measured the levels at different time points. What I'm drawing along the bottom here shows in white, that's the daytime, and coloured in black is nighttime. So that's actually the site Geber time. So zero actually represents uh, dawn, whereas at 12, that regulates, um, dictates dusk. And so in mice, because they're nocturnal, they have their highest levels of NAMPT during the night time, which is when they're active, and correlates with when clock and BMAR1 are also active. So that kind of makes sense. So how do NAD plus levels fluctuate in this mouse liver? Well, they pretty much mirror what happens with the NAMPT levels, which basically shows that this fluctuation in NAMPT will also alter the synthesis of NAD+. So we can see that NAD plus levels fluctuate. So how does that affect the activity levels of these NAD plus dependent enzymes? So the one that I'll focus on because it's also linked into the circadian clock are sirtuins or sirtuins. I've had this argument before, I don't know which is the right way to say it. And sirtuins are NAD plus dependent enzymes that remove acetyl groups from proteins. And the consequence of removing acetyl groups and proteins can affect the function or the activity level of that protein. And so when the reaction is complete, you have your protein minus the acetyl group and you have nicotinamides instead of NAD+. So as I said, sirtuins are NAD plus dependent deacylases and they respond to the nutrient levels in the cell because they require NAD plus for their activity. So it shouldn't be surprising then that there's also a circadian fluctuation in sirtuin activity. And so in mice, there's also a diurnal oscillation of the activity levels and you have a peak activity at the site gave a time 15, which correlates with the, the highest peak in the NAMT levels and the NAD plus levels. So if we go back to our map, we see that increased NAMT increases NAD plus, which increases certain activity. And so it's a little bit more complicated than that because in humans we actually have seven different sirtuin enzymes, so sirtuin 1 to 7. And each of these different sirtuins, they bind NAD+, but they all bind NAD+, to different affinities. And you can get this affinity by looking at the Km value for the different sirtuins. So Km is the Michaelis constant and it effectively is a value that is the substrate concentration, so in this case it would be the NAD plus concentration, where you have the half maximum activity of the enzyme. So you can think of it as the lower the, the constant, the lower the substrate concentration, the better, right? Because you're going to have a greater activity at a lower level of NAD plus. So therefore the sirtuins that have a higher constant, so SERT1 and SERT3, they require higher levels of NAD plus to have a greater activity level. So the daily fluctuations in NAD plus are going to affect the activity of these two SERT1 more. And this is interesting because SERT1 is the SERT1 in humans that is found in the nucleus. And so when you have increased NAMPT and you have an increased NAD plus, we know that we're going to increase the SERT1 levels and SERT1 actually represses the clock because it removes the acetyl group from BMAR1, which prevents the activity of BMAR1. So it's got this negative feedback loop, which shows how NAD plus can also drive and interact the clock as well as being an output of the clock. And it's even more complicated than that because NAD plus is also required by another NAD plus dependent enzyme, PARP1. And part one adds poly ADP ribose to clock, and the addition of this moiety to clock actually weakens the binding of clock to DNA. And so, with a weakened binding to DNA, the the expression of the genes is also weakened. And so, again, this has a negative feedback loop and represses the clock. Very complicated. <laughs> 
So in case I lost some of you, let's just summarise and reiterate what I've just been saying. So based on the research, we can see that there's circadian fluctuations in NAD+, and this is as an output of the clock through the circadian regulation of NAMPT. But we also see that through the activity of sirtwins and PARP1, it can also modulate and regulate the clock as well, so it acts as an input. So how do NAD plus levels fluctuate during a day? The question of this video. So liver NAD plus levels show a bimodal circadian oscillation pattern. So um, I'm going to redraw out what I did earlier because what I did earlier was a bit messy. But this effectively comes from the research paper that I've linked in the description because they looked at the NAD plus levels throughout the day. And so what we see is we see this bimodal oscillation pattern where we will have that peak NAD plus levels at the site gave a time of 15. And so we see this bimodal oscillation because it's always that highest peak occurs once every 24 hours, even though we see two individual peaks in oscillation. So if the circadian clock has a 24 hour regulation, why do we see two peaks? Well, that's because it's still more complicated. And we know that NAD plus levels are going to be affected by exercise, eating and fasting periods, age, and now with the use of NAD precursors such as NMN and NR supplements as well. And so I hope this video has given a good introduction to how NAD plus levels fluctuate throughout the day. And as always, thanks for listening.